Thank you for listening to another edition of Interview with DJ Nocturna. I'm speaking with uh, Greek pop artist Leah Hyde, uh, all, all the way from Greece. And um, if you're watching on my YouTube channel, please like, subscribe, and share. Hi, Leah. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Greetings from Greece. Hope everyone's great and having a nice summertime. Um, Kalispera for you. Kalispera. <laughs> Kalismera over here. Um, yeah, it's kind of early in the morning here. Um, well, not too early. And I know it's about um, nine o'clock over there in Greece. It's are you in nine Athens? the evening, yes. Are, are you in Athens? No, I'm in Hios. Um, we were performing um, this past uh, few days in a festival. I've been here since um, uh, Friday, last Friday. And oh. it's a very, very weird situation because I caught COVID on oh, uh, no yes saturday morning i was um i was tested positive and i did my quarantine i did my isolation i did my i watched the entire stranger things the entire i've never watched one episode so i just swooped it all <laughs> in, in one scoop and um it was fun i'm okay um okay I, they, I, I made you, it, um... I perform, so i'm feeling okay I just i'm just a little bit nosy and uh, my, my no nose okay. is funny and um it was mild no 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 fever no high fever no pain no ache no just weird sleep and um back on my feet so it's okay. it's very very nice to hear you and see you all because i feel like i'm back and, oh and yeah great. how how is the situation over there with um is everybody is the the business is open everything is everything is okay yes everything is okay uh, no everything is open but it's not okay because um it, it's a very weird thing suddenly one day um our um I mean our nhs let's say they just said um remove the masks and we're all done with the virus that's it and only five days of quarantine so we're done with it so, you know, right right now we have this explosion of um, people who have different variants. Most of them are doing okay. We don't have a very, very low. The death toll is very, very low. But it's still early in the summer and not all the tourists are here yet. So I am in a very, very, um, let's say, isolated island. I'm very far away, uh, close to Turkey, actually. Hios is right across, oh. right opposite of the Turkey shore. Mm -hmm. And um, they told us that on Friday, we had three people with COVID in the island. It's a big island. And um, four days after that, there were 230. So it's a very, 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 very high running and rising number. I don't know what's going to happen. The good thing is that we don't, we're not discussing numbers involving people who die so that, that's i'm trying to say it as polite as i can i think it's we're going to have to live with this we're going to yeah. have to learn how to yeah. just gonna have involve to involve this into our daily yeah. agenda for me i'm totally like done with it already you know i just want to move on and just you know i'm just been this is way too long going through you know it's just time to move on I mean, this, you gotta, I mean, if we don't, we businesses will shut down again. And it, I mean, I hope that never happens again, you know. Um, but anyway, I'm so happy to have you on the show. Um, you know, I love Greece. I've never been there and I'm hoping to go one day or not just one day, but many, many, many days. <laughs> but, you, you, need, you need a lot of days if you come over. There's, oh, yeah, definitely. there's a million things we have to show you. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's really far from from where I am. So, uh, yes, definitely. But um. You know, thank you for joining me. I know you you have a you have a new album that's just been released. Um, it's called The Missing Fourth Guest, which is mm -hmm. based on Plato Simaeus, which is uh, we'll mm -hmm. talk about in a bit. But I know you had three albums already, right? Yes. Home, Home which you released in 2013. Everyone seems to know who I am, 2017, and tells no fairy tales. Mm -hmm. That's in 2019. Um, yes. So tell us a little bit about how you um, started in your musical journey. Um, well, my musical journey started, you know, how we usually say us musicians that music was always in the house. Same thing with me. Um, but mm -hmm. my 
let's say Leah Hyde, because that's not my that's my stage name. Let's say that Leah Hyde was born uh, when I was graduating from my classical piano and operatic singing studies, and um, I was already uh, a featured artist in electronica and um, soulful and chill out projects that were mm -hmm. very very popular in the in the late zeros. So um, there was a, a, a typo. My name is um, my name comes from a typo. So um, the name was created, and I was let's say in in a way forced into taking me seriously. There's there's this thing I think that we classical musicians have, or people who come from a classical background, our imposter syndrome is all over the place because we are taught to be very humble and um, yeah, we know of this vast ocean of masterpieces that have been there before us. So I was, I was very shy and humble and I did not want to expose my thoughts musically. So I'd say that the journey of Leah Hyde, um, the recording artist and the solo artist, it started some time before home when I was invited to play piano for a fellow songwriter. And um, I went through the process of a singer songwriter's album. And I thought to myself, this is easy. I should have done that. I could have done that. Why not do this? So I decided to write my own, my own albums. And this is how I created home, which mm -hmm. was like, um, a place where my alter ego lived and she killed people who bugged her. So I made a little serial killer for my first album. Mm -hmm. And then it all felt very, very easy, very natural. It felt like I've been doing this forever. So I'd say I started sometime in the late zeros as a featured artist. And then I buckled up and I said, I'm going to do the solo thing again. And then I created the... Um, the band, so now we have this core of uh, me, Aki Bass, who is on bass, and George Jado, who is on, on drums, and it's actually the three of us is now what is Leah Hyde. It's like uh -huh. um, a pyramid of three personas. And we also have Dennis on guitar and Steyos on trumpet for this album, which I hope they stay for the mm -hmm. next album as well. So you, your main instrument is a piano. Is it piano? My main instrument is piano, oh. yes. Do you play other instruments besides piano? Um, I suck utterly at um, guitar. I, I like it. It just doesn't like me. There's something wrong with my arm when I bend it to, to, you know, to reach the frets. Something terribly ha wrong happens with me twisting my arm. Um, I do play uh, bass, um, electric bass. I used to play a little bit of viola and... Um, a little bit of bassoon back in school, but I don't actually play these instruments, but I just know how to write on them. It was very, very good that I had this knowledge of being able to compose for these instruments as a, as a general knowledge. And I, I also am the proud owner of a ukulele that I think you're in Hawaii, that I don't play though. It belongs in the family of guitars that I suck. So it would be electric bass, piano, any keyboard, anything that has keyboards. And it's a pretty much multi-instrumentalist. Well, multi-instrumentalist, um, let's say explorer. I explore anything that makes sounds, but I, I am actually a pianist. And um that's oh, what yeah. I that's what I, that's what I do. That's my instrument. So I I know you, 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 you know, you, your music is, is a little darker, right? So it's in the darker genre realm. So, you know, with, with, with Greek, you know, living in being Greek yourself and, you know, Greek mythology, you know, having, you know, Greek mythology has a lot to do with, you know, love, passion, revenge, you know, some of the, you know, the, some of the Greek myths are just out there, right? Uh, is your music or the genre that you play is that is that accepted? Do you think it's uh, accepted more in um, with the people there? No, 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 not really. I think, uh, mm. from what I know, our music is doing great in Northern Europe, mostly, um, and not so much in Greece. Mm -hmm. It's this genre of uh, dark pop and um, 
especially us, we are a little bit more progressive and a little bit more avant-garde. We, I think we scare people off. I think it's um, the more intellect you squeeze into a piece of, of art, and especially if it's not in our, in, in our mother tongue, the more frightened I see people. Really? <laughs> they're, they're, they're like scared or... Um, Sometimes in the in the previous albums, I would try to employ um, a mode or a rhythm, a pattern that's traditional because it's very it's it's a, a thing, right? I in Greece to have traditional rhythms and patterns into music. So I would try to make um, us more friendly, mm-hmm. and then that that didn't work. So I decided not to try anything just express what i want and let's see how that goes but i know that um even though we employ the mythology or the greek tragedy or the writings of plato and we don't do that and i don't do that on purpose it's just what i wanted to write about it doesn't Mm. bring us closer to the general greek audience because we are because it's the english language and Mm. that's really interesting huh because Greek myth is very dark in some ways, you know, I mean, look at look at Hades and Persephone. It was about abduction and, uh, you know, just under the underworld, you know, for one thing. And, you know, I mean, there's so many different ones. In fact, here, I want to show you. So I got a little little statue of Zeus. Now I have now I'm I'm a sun sign Sagittarius. So he's my ruling planet, right? My ruling God, you know, Jupiter. Mm -hmm. And then I've got um, I've got Aphrodite, Venus. This is a little statue. And, uh, you know, that's my moon sign. I'm a Taurus moon. So that's and then I, I'm a Scorpio ascendant. So I don't I don't have um, Hades around. I'm not yet. <laughs> but but uh, well, he's, he's just another God, by the way, Hades, he never killed anyone. Zeus yeah. did the, most of the killing, actually. And, and well, all of them. But Hades, he just ruled the place. He did, never killed anyone. The other gods are the vengeful ones and the mean ones. And um, well, you see, Greeks today um, are a bit um, away from the ideal Greek or from what people might think we are in Greece. I, I know that when people want to come here, they want to see the Parthenon, they want to see the Acropolis, they want to see. Mm-hmm. And people dream about coming here and they want to be in touch with our heritage and our culture. But this grandeur and this this magnificent history behind us is like um, thousands of years ago. And um, we also have the tendency to remember the greatness of it. We don't remember how the... um, Do you remember that series with Hercules, that silly show? on TV, it used to be with um, with Hercules and Iolus, and they would do things. And it was um, mm. a couple of years back. Um, I remember the opening line of the show was, um, "Ages ago, the ancient gods were petty and cruel." And I was thinking, yes, that's what they were. They were petty <laughs> and cruel. They would punish people, murder <clears throat> people, transform people into rocks, beasts. Rain, flame, bush, whatever, rape people, um, all these things. So Greek myth, Greeks here, I think they don't want to be reminded of that, but they'd rather have a, a bright and shiny Zeus and an almighty and wise Athena and um, a, a mighty Mars, but they don't remember that oh, those myths and these stories were that the humans, the simpletons, they were uh, governed by whatever the gods wanted to. They were taught to be, to fear punishment, to, um, to live under the shadow of the gods, to offer uh, offerings, their lives, their children, their wives. So um, I, think the, I think the ancient Greeks were pretty much aware and living under this thing as a normal uh, life and we, only remember the glorious temples and the magnificent agora where people would philosophize and exchange opinions about democracy. We don't remember the never-ending war 
we don't remember that we created the Olympics just to stop war every four years, finally. <laughs> all that, all the massacre, all the bloodshed, we don't remember that. So um, I think this is why I fail to bring a Greek audience closer to what I do, because I, I, am, I am discussing faults. I am discussing trouble and I am discussing how people could better themselves in, in a society, um, in their town, in their city, in their country, in our world, and how they could be better to their person standing next to them. And I don't think that's a very <laughs> welcoming theme. Yeah, well, oh, that's, I always wanted to know that, you know, from the perspective, you know, because, um, you know, I, I know they have some, they have a goth community there, right? Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, they do. And I, I just, you know, when I go there, I'm going to check that out. <laughs> I'm going to check out the scene. Um, well, the scene is amazing and very warm and very uh, tight and very supportive. Um, and and um, there are some clubs who are um, dedicated to that and they're always packed. Mm -hmm. Very uh, amazing community. In, in, um, I, in Athens? Yes, in Athens. Oh. Um, one of the major venues is Death Disco. That's where all the havoc is happening. When we have bigger uh, names, they might go into other clubs with, you know, a couple of 10 or 20,000 people capacity. Um, what was it? It was like two weeks ago, we had Bauhaus. That oh, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw them. Um, I saw them in uh, San Francisco just the last, the last, like two months ago. Yeah, there's, I, yeah, so that's, there was another great show. Yeah, I was like, uh, yeah, in fact, I did an interview with David J. It's on my uh, YouTube channel as well. So you're, it was you're, amazing. Yeah, totally. So your latest album is the fourth one. It's called uh, the, the Missing Fourth Guest. I, I love that title. I know it's from Plato's Timaeus, but tell us about that and why you picked that uh, theme. Um, we had a lot of time in our hands during quarantine, and the songs were actually already written. So we were down in the living room. Um, our studio is upstairs and um, the house is downstairs. And we were just drinking some wine and talking about the fact that we didn't have an album title. Everything was ready. The album was being mastered. And <laughs> our sound engineer was like, I need a title. I need to fix DTP. You need to send me the, the title of the album. And we said, we, there should be, there might be, there ought to be a pattern in there. And um, we started discussing about what went through our heads during the creative process. We remembered about Plato. Um, I remember about Timos, the dialogue. And as it was the three of us on the table discussing how it's always us, but mm -hmm. there's always an extra person who is helping us pull this through. So oh, yeah, yeah. I, see. I just Googled, yeah. where's the fourth one? And the... Uh, the sentence came up in, in English, like, you know, Timo's Where is the Missing Fourth Guest? And I said, that's our, that's our album title. Oh, wow, that's perfect. Yeah. I know there were four characters. I, Socrates was one of them, and um, I, don't, I can't remember the other one. But yeah, yeah, there's other four of them. Yeah, that's great. That's a great title, I, actually. It really stands out. Um, do, you have any, do you have any favorite um, Greek gods or goddesses? I used to like Athena because she is the wise one and she was a warrior and um, she's a protector of the city of Athens. And it was supposed to be that the uh, golden and um, marble, I think, um, statue of her was inside the Parthenon, a huge one made by Phidias. But um, I think I like the demigods better than the gods themselves because the it was, it's very funny. I know I sounded a bit mean and <laughs> hateful towards the gods. I'm not afraid, so don't punish me. So, um, I'll be, I'll, I'll be really quiet about that one. <laughs> no, no. Um, I think I like the, the stories of the demigods better than the gods themselves because the gods were very, they were all multidimensional. They all had a lot of things to their story and to their character. But the even more interesting, on the brink of making the gods completely mad, trying to solve the humans, but then getting caught in all these weird things. So 
like you know Hercules, which is a demigod. I liked him as a child. I think everybody loved, liked um, Hercules. And then as I was studying more, I I started liking other Greek personalities, like Aspasia, who was a very famous sex worker of the time, and she oh, was yeah. a very influential Besta. person. Is that, did you say Be Besta, right? Hestia, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, Aspasia. yeah. Aspasia. Yeah. Uh, uh, Aspasia. I don't uh, know, have we? Aspasia was the, she was not a sex worker. She was like, you know, um, a high quality courtesan or something like that. But they were independent back then in the day. They didn't belong to anyone. And she would get to talk and discuss and philosophize with the men in the banquets she would hold. And these are the people I admired more of the Greek. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kingdom, uh, stardom, <laughs> personality, gods and figurines, all these. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, there's so much history there. I just love it. Um, you, you know, I, your new album has all these. I like the uterus will. You, and I, I thought of when I, when I saw that title, I go, she's not talking about the, you know, the Roe versus Wade overturning in the U.S. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> because this, this was. No, it was, it was way I mean, back wrote, when I wrote that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, you talk about reincarnation in the song. It's um, a song that I, I wrote because I, I, I probably uh, I'm not um, I'll probably won't have children and um, I, I, I decided not to not to drown myself in tears over it. Not whatever is going to happen is going to happen. I wasn't blessed with children and it was not something that I um, that ruled my life. It was something I always left as. Um, if it comes, be, so be it. If it doesn't, mm -hmm. it's okay. I am a teacher. I've been blessed with far too many glorious, amazing, talented people in my life. So motherhood is something that as, 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 a, as a woman has always troubled me. Um, our whole body is a circle, is a machine that works in circles meant to give birth, finally. Mm -hmm. And um, I was very troubled because we lost a very very dear, um, we lost my partner's father during the, um, the quarantine. So it was our, 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 we were trying to have a child or thinking about what would happen if we had a child. And in the meantime, we had to face death. So I made my uterus write down a will and testament. Um, so it, it's like my female side is, is telling to my lover um, that I'm, I'm going to make us immortal with um, the love we had while we were being alive. So it sums up my fear of getting mm. old, dying, um, probably suffering from dementia or something like this, where you lose yourself completely. Yeah. And the feminine side of, that rules my my entity that I, I am a woman. I, I, I we know, you know, um, it may be weird for men to think about that, but we do, ha we have a small ache in our lower abdominal system and we know we, 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 we can picture it. And I always felt it's, it's a shame that we don't talk about that body part. I can talk about a toothache. I can talk about a headache, but I can't mm -hmm. talk yeah, about great. what my uterus might want. Yeah, and very how my true. life is yeah, is ruled on that. Yeah, that's very true, and um, I have a lot to say about that overturning, but I'm not. I don't want to do it here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, we want to keep our freedom, right, and um, autonomy. Yes, so, yes. yeah, yeah. So I I know that we share some musical inspiration. Like one of them, of course, is um. I know you like Nick yes. Cave, Bad Seeds. Um, where I wore this for you. Um, uh, thank you. We, we both share that passion and i i also love kate bush and i love your cover of the portis head song which is wonderful oh, thank you i love portis head um one of my favorite bands and bjork of course uh, yeah so that i i know that's some of your inspiration now i have a question about do you think um do you think is is do you have any challenges like being a, a female artist in um, in Greece? 
you know, just it's, um, I don't know if it's if it's dif different in Greece um, in comparison to other places because we were fortunate enough to have traveled a lot. So I've been, um, I haven't been in the U.S. for quite some time, but um, I've traveled in the Europe. I, mean, I traveled in Europe extensively before COVID, and um, but you know when you travel to a place, you don't really know what happens. You're only a tourist there, even if you stay um, a week or two. So um, I don't know if it's Greece or if it would be generally like this. Um, recently, we had this um, showcase in Athens, the Athens Music Week, and we were um, invited to perform and discuss in the forums. I remember meeting with the girls from Estonia and they shared some very interesting insights on what it's like to be a girl in Estonia. Um, so I remember the, the French, um, the French group said, oh, we never knew that about you. We only thought you were a little bit, you know, um, you felt like you would. The Estonian girls said, it's very difficult for us to feel, to accept compliment. We don't compliment each other much. So we don't know how to do that. And when we receive a compliment, we usually act like we're rude or we just don't know how to do this. So, yeah. We talked about the female um, place in, as an artist in the community. And even though we want to um, say that we've moved on and that we have rights and we, we are free to do things and um, we now have more places to perform, we now have more ears to listen to us, I still think people think that girls are lesser. Like, people might tell me oh you play the bass guitar are you a composer are you written music for dance i've never seen people ask these questions with such a face to male um colleagues i've never seen someone go like wow you've written music you're a composer as well and you studied classical music when they ask this to male um artists they'll be like oh so you studied right we're well, very well studied there's an awe and in, in in the face of the <laughs> Or the one who poses the question when they ask a female and there's like a reassurance when they're asking a male yeah and of yeah. course it's the thing of the look we have i have to i had to look good i put on a, a nice dress i made up i i need to look good I, I need to present myself not only because i want to be i want everyone to feel like they're coming to my place and we're having dinner so i I'm looking my best, but also because this is how female is supposed to be. We are supposed to be species, the good looking one, the well, whereas a man, legs wide open, probably smoking or having some beer, and it'll be okay. Imagine me going like, yeah, so how's this? How are you in Hawaii? Oh, cool, great. Yeah, great. I love it. I, I am there is a perception yeah. of people how a girl is supposed to act so yeah that's, that's very i think that's here too like anywhere you know i think it's just that's why uh, for me i just you know everybody just needs to be appreciated i mean we need to support each other you know um yeah i i totally uh i I totally can understand that. It's, it's, I think it's here too. It's, it's, it's like that. It's been like that for how many for centuries, you know? Oh. Yes. And then we try to explain to people that this is um, a patriarchal world and we're trying to communicate that we want basic fundamental things. We have this great, crazy, crazy, crazy period here in Greece. There is a lot of femicide, a lot. And People are having trouble with the term. They do not like it. They don't like it when we say, but her husband killed her, but her boyfriend killed her, but her father killed her because she was a girl and she was murdered. They're like, no, it's plain murder. It's not femicide. And we're like, what is your problem with the terminology? Why can't you just say it's a femicide? She was murdered because she was a girl. So we're still talking about plain, simple, fundamental things. So of course, as an artist, I am perceived differently. I am a girl. I am 
Well, you know, you, you make good music, and I appreciate that, and that's why I uh, have, have you on the show, um, because you speak your mind, which is good, and that, that's what that's how it should be. And a big shout out to to uh, Moon Coil Media, uh, William Zimmerman. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, you know your album is out, and if people want to check it out, it's um you have a, you have a uh, a website leahhide.com. Yes. Would, would that be the best way to find your music? And of course, Bandcamp, right? What's the best? Well, I mean, I know you're... It's anywhere, anywhere you like, whatever you prefer. I'm sure um, our label, uh, it's uh, Kongtown Records. They're in Miami. Conch uh, so we Rec chose. Yes. Is that Conchtown Records, it... Florida? Well, yeah. based in yes. Florida. Okay, good. Yeah. Yes. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's in, in the U.S. Yeah. Are you are you planning? Um, so you've been to the U.S. before, right? You've been to the U.S. Let me see. I've been to the U.S. in uh, um, 2005, I think. I was in San Francisco and Sacramento and Berkeley. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't been there since because I was very busy um, doing things over here. And I was a little bit afraid to go back. I, I was um, I was asked to stay, and I think I ran away. <laughs> so I, I thought next time I visit the U.S., I will not be afraid of it, and I will be very bold. So we are discussing with uh, Miami to come over and to start traveling around. Oh, so yeah. yes, we might meet soon. In yeah, or <laughs> right, I might just see you there. <laughs> but yeah, uh, all right. Well. Do you have any um, any future plans? I know I know this album came out uh, this year, right? Yes. April. In April. Okay. And, and any um, any up, any updates? Um, we are performing this Saturday on a big festival in Athens, though. Um, and um, well, since we are fans of the darker gothic scene, and um, we like okay. that. Our dark wave slash um, punkish, no, not punkish. Our dark wave song, Cloud, um, Cloud is in the in the Timeus Sonata, is coming up um, in late September, which is a okay. very big project. It it took us three days of filming. We we went in um, a dozen of Greek locations, very unique and weird because we wanted to show that. So uh -huh. we are going to share with you a brand new video in September. And okay. we're hoping we have big uh, stops to announce in our upcoming tour. We, I'm, I'm dying to get back in a minivan and travel. I'm, I'm dying to do that. So you, you also have this uh, other project that you were involved in. You, you were commissioned to compose the music for a dance drama. Yeah, it's called a. Uh, it's, it's a Greek word. Uh, it means gen genocide. Yes. Genotonia. Is that right? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Can you can you tell us about that? Um, it's the story of the um of the Pontiac Greek. These were the um the uh, my ancestors. My grandfather used to be, used to come from that place. Um, these are the Greeks who who lived um around the Black Sea. So there was this, um, in, in early 1900s, there, there was an exchange of population between um, Turkey and Greece. Um, that's how it started. But later on, the, the Turks massacred tens of thousands of people, not only uh, the Pontiacs, but also you know, the Kurds and the Armenians and all these people. It was that devastating time. And I wrote the music for the ballet. It's, um, oh, it's a ballet. A modern ballet, yeah. Um, okay. um, it was it was three years ago. It was pro COVID, um, so it was 2019, I think. And it's a very 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 dark um, show. Um, it, it, it was on an award winning performance. Um, this is my only work that is not out there digitally. It's the only work. My only music uh, album that is only available as an as a CD can only get it through Bandcamp. Mm. I don't want to have it out there digitally. I don't know why yet. I haven't. But uh, it's called it's called. Can you pronounce that? Genoctonia. Oh yeah, it's Genoctonia. 
Yeah, no, Tony. Genos is the um, Genos is the the people. Um, mm -hmm. Let's say nationality and ktonia. Ktono is when you kill someone. This is where ktinos comes from, the beast. So oh, okay. yes, that's a little, a little Greek lesson, <laughs> a tiny one. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Well, so um, if people want to, your band camp is on there. They be Leah Hyde. So it's Hyde, like H I D E and Leah, L I A H I D E. People want to check that out. And um, wow. Anything else? Um, anything else going on? You know, thank you so much for joining me. I, I, I know um, you're, you know, you're, you're touring and I appreciate you taking the time you 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 know you traveled to another place so i know that um just trying to get uh the interview i really appreciate that well thank you for um having me over there in hawaii so that's that's incredible yeah so leahhide.com is the website if you want to check out the her music and just information about you but uh, i appreciate you coming on the on the show let me just turn off the recording thank you very much if anybody wants to check you out, they can do that. Okay. One, one moment. Let me just stop this. Thank you. Thank you.